Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we've got the usual suspects, Sans, the Zen master, Mike Zeno. We have the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. I'm here. Um, all is well. So, yeah, no complaints. All right. Fantastic. We've got the nightcap OG dude buddy, Scott Bossman. Scott, how, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Mimi tells me I have red eyes. Uh, I'm not sick. I'm just, you know, a little too much, uh, too much whiskey last night. No, I'm kidding. No, no red eyes at all. I'm good. I'm doing well. All right. Great. Great. We've got the most feared woman on the planet, Mimi Schmidt, the terrorist hunter. Mimi, how are you? Doing great. How are you doing, Mark? I'm I'm surviving. Kids are home are are taking are uh, are taking online classes now. That's good. It's keeping them busier. Getting walks out. Self care. It's all good. Eating right. Can't complain. Uh, the 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 big papa with the two young youngsters. Yeah, How's it going, Tate Litchfield? Ah, uh, good. If my eyes are red, it's not because of the whiskey. It's because of uh, sleepless nights. But uh, other than that, things are going really well in our house. We can't complain. Everybody's healthy. And like kind of Mark alluded to, we're getting to spend a lot of family time together. It's really wonderful. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? Speaking of family time, the uh, the Todd family, the family that – Flies together, stays together. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist, your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you doing? Mark, I'm great. Um, there's a uh, video circulating around about, uh, I think Tate sent it to us. Maybe we should share it with this video about, uh, you know, like, for the quarantine, you get to stay, uh, for the quarantine, you have a couple of choices. A, you can stay home with your wife and kids or, and the guy goes, B, B, before they even tell what B is. Uh, you know, there might be people feeling that pain right now and maybe, maybe we should share that video, Tate, make sure that Danielle has it to share it with this podcast because I think it's really like- might Sending it now. Yeah, we, we were going to talk about, you know, how we're doing with, you know, the the quarantine coronavirus but you know we all kind of agreed we're all getting coronavirus fatigue so let's not talk about it we all know it's out there there's not much more to to add except to say you know it's this too shall pass and um you know certainly it it like all things it will so it was just one of those things. But I thought, Eric Peterson, we had, a, we had an interesting topic you want to discuss. What's, what's on your mind? So we're going to talk about just market flexibility today. So really what that comes down to is how do we know when to adjust our pricing in an area, either on the, the buy side or on the sell side? And, you know, what steps we take in order to, to kind of keep an eye on that? Yeah, absolutely. And um, I'm, I'm really trying to use a lot of self-discipline and not make you the host, Eric Peterson, because I haven't publicly just come out and said, what a great job you did hosting the roundtable two weeks ago. And, um, but I can see on your face, you don't want me to do that. So I will then lead with the next question, which is, Eric Peterson, what types of flexible maneuvers are you looking at currently doing in the current marketplace of where we're at with an uncertain economy going to the next few months? So I think um, in general, um, you want to keep an eye on your comps in the areas you work in. Um, whether we're in the midst of a, a quarantine or, you know, in the midst of good times, it, it doesn't matter when, but I think it's important to watch your markets on a very consistent basis because as pricing starts going up or maybe coming down, 
you should you know be able to swing with that and make sure that you're buying for the right price with the end in mind um so what does that mean well i think you know it means checking your comps maybe a little more frequently and you know determining if if you're in line with the other sellers out there and and what um properties are are being bought for um so that's kind of the, the first piece of it i think are you contacting i think if you're in a, in a county now that is not online getting comps can be tough you can't call the county they're not there so eric what do you do so that's true but i think that um if you're in an area and you've been working in an area for a while you probably know who else works in that area um there's probably at least a handful of other land sellers that are working in that area so i would advise you to to be watching what they're doing watching when their properties are selling you know if you can figure out what they're getting for them um that's helpful um but you know sometimes you have to be a little creative with how you find those actual sold comps and it's it's definitely not always easy but um that's probably one of the best things you can do is just follow other land sellers and watch what's going on out there okay great great uh dude buddy nightcap og scott bossman how are you uh what what maneuvers are you taking right now in this current market well i think right now there's a little bit of speculation as well as far as what's going to happen uh, with uh you know being able to buy property so i might get a little bit more aggressive on my my offers right now depending on on the area um i don't really know what to base that on uh you know i'm, I'm thinking maybe uh uh if i'm offering if i'm making an offer at 25 cents on the dollar, dollar maybe i'll shoot for 20 cents on the dollar and see what happens and and kind of split test it, or test the market a little bit um so I think we're going into, you know, a time where maybe we can't, maybe there is a little bit of speculation. I think a number of months ago, um, what, what I do is I look at comps, like Eric said, and I also enjoy getting offer letters in the mail from other land investors. Um, I got one from Eric Peterson recently, actually, and, and uh, he offered what I would have offered for the property. I'm like, I'm right on with this market analysis thing. But every once in a while, you get an offer from somebody. Uh, and this does not happen very often, by the way, but, but uh, it's, it's, just, it's interesting to see what offer uh, uh, other land investors are giving you on your property. Um, and and you, can, uh, you can kind of gauge from that if it happens often enough, you know, may, maybe I should adjust my pricing or wow, that person just did not do their research uh, whatsoever. And I'm comfortable continuing with, with what I'm doing. Uh, but uh, that being said, and I know Scott Todd talks about this a lot, you have to be really careful with your numbers because if you're mailing to an area at 50 cents on the dollar, you're going to skew the market and, and uh, that's going to that's gonna have an effect on the rest of us as well. Yeah, Mimi has a great story about that. Um, Mimi Schmidt, what, what kind of uh, maneuvers are you making right now as far as being flexible? I, I do this and I tell my students to, too subscribe to all the wholesale lists out on the Facebook groups. Because if you see upward pressure on the buy side through those wholesale lists, that's a great indicator that the prices are going up in the area. And I've noticed over the years that the buy side always seems to go up quicker than the sell side, which hurts, right? It squeezes my margins. But um, Landmoto, I always look at Landmoto to see if there's upward pressure on the sales prices. Um, I do have a good story. I got a, an accepted offer and I called the guy. He owned a group of properties. I told my intake manager just to buy them all. And he said that he'd sold one of them. And I sought out that property. I looked at who bought it. I looked up the LLC. I Googled the LLC. I saw he was selling it out, the property out on one of the lands platforms. He had bought it for way too much and was selling it for so little that his payoff was going to be 31 months. And our, 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 uh, the way that we do things, when we teach to do things, you want to try to get your money back within that first year, right? So, um, and have at least a 70% return on it. Um, and I told him, I said, hey, what are you doing? Um, this is hurting, hurting the market, him overpaying for the, on the buy side, right? So 
I think it's important to pay attention to what the wholesale prices are, what properties are being bought for in your area. Um, and as for my mailings, I'm definitely going to start um, putting some lower prices in there. Not everything, right? But a as I, sp I split test and send a mailing out with maybe four or five prices, I will have some that are lower just to see what kind of response I get. Start watching that. Yeah, no, I, yeah, and I really like the, uh, the idea of subscribing to all those wholesale groups and, and getting a gauge that way. I think that's a really great way to get that data very quickly, as opposed to, you know, just analysis. contacting the county assessor and the analysis. Um, right. That's a fantastic tip. Uh, that could actually be the tip of the week, Mimi. All right. That, that right there. Done. But I'm not going to give it to you. I'm just saying it could be. <laughs> okay. Uh, the big papa, I love it when you call me big papa, Tate Litchfield, what are you doing to be more flexible in this uncertain market? You know, it's, it's tricky to say because honestly, right now I haven't seen a whole lot of changes, right? It's kind of business as usual. And so if you were to ask me today, if I was doing anything different, my answer would be no, I'm staying the course. I know my numbers and I'm not making any changes no exceptions because I haven't seen a reason to make decision or changes yet. Now, assuming I were to see some, some reasons, yeah, I'd, I'd probably get a little bit more aggressive with my pricing, lower it a little bit, but for the most part, you know, my buyers tend to buy property because it's irresistible. That's, that's a really it's good price point there. And they can afford it. Yeah, so, absolutely. I don't know, Mark. I mean, should I be getting more aggressive? I don't know. Time will tell. But as of right now, no, we're, we're just, we're doing what we know. We're sticking to the numbers that hold true to us. We're hitting our margins and we're not panicking. We're not freaking out. We're, we're just doing what we normally do. It is business as usual for us. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, um, you know, we're, we're all, you know, so, blessed and I'm, I, you know, I know we're also grateful that just the way that our businesses are built because we're not brick and mortar, because we're a hundred percent virtual, um, we're sort of well positioned in, in this, uh, economy. And then we have a commodity an asset that is a real asset. So, you know, we're not looking at it on a day-to-day -day basis, like the stock market. So, and then obviously, where do people go when, when paper assets go down, they go, they, there's a, a, a flight to real assets, land, gold, those types of things. So we're really well positioned. Uh, but I'd love to know what Scott Todd, the human yogi is doing to show his flexibility. You know, Mark, um, like Tate, business as usual, not really changing anything. Our, um, our offer prices are remaining the same for right now. Uh, I'm not getting aggressive with it. Um, I do think that people might need some money, but ultimately um, we're staying the same and we're not, you know, trying to, to gouge people in, in terms of, you know, using, using this situation to, to get a lower price. It, I mean, may, maybe I'm going to overpay. I don't know. I kind of take a different, a different track on it uh, simply because of the fact that I, I know what I'm still selling these for. It was interesting. I think it was Mimi that said that, you know, she sees that sometimes the buy pressure goes up, but the sell pressure doesn't go up, right? Like you, you have this, you have the sales price, the retail sales price remain the same, but then you see the, the land going up. And, you know, I, I struggled with this because I think what happens is, we become scared um, to kind of raise our prices on some of these properties because we're like, oh man, I know they sell really good here at this price point. They sell really good at, you know, $10,000 or whatever. But, the, but yet we might be buying them for, for more, but we're not moving the sales price up. And, you know, it's okay to move the prices up. If you're paying more for the properties, you still need to make more, right? Like that's the way that the world works. I mean, you know, if Walmart... If Walmart's buying uh, aspirin for, I don't know, for $3 today and tomorrow costs $4, but they're selling that $3 aspirin for six, 
tomorrow they might sell the aspirin for eight if they have to pay four for it, right? Like they still have to maintain the margins along the way because they just have to operate. I think there's nothing wrong with that. But ultimately what it takes is it takes, you know, somebody saying it's okay. Like the land is costing more now. And I'll tell you what, I fought my own sales team on this. They're like, no, we can get it. And finally, when I sat back and I'm like, then get it, go do it. Guess what? We started selling properties that I was literally, I was selling properties for, uh, you know, like $6,000 back in the day, like four years ago, selling some of these properties for $6,000. Today they're getting 12 for it. And I can't even fathom how they're getting 12 for it, but it's me getting out of my own way. That's the way, it, that's the, what's causing it. Yeah. I mean, we were, we were on a, a podcast the other day and uh, the guy was like, I took a year off or, or three months off or whatever, whatever it was. He's like, and my business shot up 122%. And I joked, yeah, whenever I take you know, my July off business always, always does better. It's, it's, it's so true. Like we do get in our own way. And I have talked about being trapped by expertise and, and thinking that, you know, you know, the market better. What it, you know, the, the maddening thing about land and the great thing about land is it's an inefficient market and truly it's what a buyer and the seller agree to. And you have to be flexible. Um, on, on the buy side and the sell side. I think that's, Scott, is that the moral of the story? Yeah, it is. Okay, fantastic. So as I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a quick update um, from the frontier side of it. As of uh, this recording on Thursday, March 24th, we have not had one note default. Um, we had a bunch of notes pay off, not pay off, but just people making their monthly payments no issues, no emails. We've had, we have personally felt no sense of fear or panic within our uh, note portfolio yet. Eric Peterson, how about you? Um, no, I haven't had any fall off, but there, there is one I'm watching. Actually, you just made me think of it. So I was checking it as you were talking. Um, that's, They've been delinquent for a little bit, so chances are they probably will default, but I'm not going to tie that directly to our current situation. That's something that's been building over time. Okay. Scott Bossman. Yeah, same thing. I have two on the verge, but they're at the end of their 60-day default period, so I, I'm thinking their troubles may have started uh, you know, a few months ago, or, or they decided they didn't want the land a few months ago. Um, so. Yeah, no defaults uh, because of this uh, current crisis. And, and actually, as far as sales go, we had a great, great week last week, um, a cash sale yesterday. So uh, no change in the sales here in the last week. All right, Tara Center. Had a one default at the beginning of the month, but not situation specific. Everything else is normal. All right, Big Papa. Uh, I did get our first e my first email this morning from somebody. They uh, have been paying with us since 2016. They have a $200 month note. Uh, they've paid for the property now multiple times over. Um, and they owe about $5,000 left on their note. And she asked for uh, reduced payments for 60 days because she lost her job. So she's going down to 50% payments. I said, no problem. Absolutely, happy to help. Help you. Happy to help you when I can. Uh, I think the important thing is she's going to a reduced payment. It's for sixty days, and after that, you know, we're going to bump it back up to usual. And she was so grateful. I feel like a good person. I, we look like a good guy. It's you know, it's the right thing to do. I love it. I love it. Uh, Scott Todd, how about you? Uh, the only situation I had was uh, sold a property in February to somebody uh, and they both, him and his wife both work in the hotel uh, industry and they called us and said that, uh, that they love the property but they can't make their payment because they're not working right now and they asked for a one month for, for goings, if you will. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, come on. It's the first payment. Come on. You gotta be, you gotta like step up. Right. And, uh, we're like, look, can you just make any payment? They're like, we don't have a job at all. 
like we both had good paying jobs and now we're both jobless. So we're hoping it comes back. And I'm like, look, we'll let you skip one month because you're calling me. I'm gonna let you skip one month. But really the, the rule for, for us that we've talked about is we just can't have everybody skipping payments, right? Like that's, that's a disaster for everybody. So there's no skipping payments. That's like the only one that we're going to do or extenuating circumstances. But for, and the only other logic behind that is like, they're still within the 30 day uh, or the, sorry, the 90 day money back guarantee. So, you know, I don't necessarily want to like give them their money back. I'd rather like let it go and see what happens. I might have to give them their money back. Who knows? But essentially um, the rule is, is that we will reduce payments up to 50% uh, for a very short window, but we can't, we can't skip payments. Like if I skip a payment, well then my mortgage company's not gonna let me skip a payment, right? It has a domino effect. We're all in this together. So you can reduce, but we just can't, everybody skip a payment. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, um, well, I thought this was a, a really great podcast and, and it's and it's great not to sort of put any more fuel on the coronavirus fire. Um, because we're all kind of sick of it now. I know I am. Eric, are you sick of it? Yeah, I'm ready to, to move on. Yeah, COVID fatigue. Mimi, are you sick of it? I love having my kids around. I'm digging that aspect of it, but I'm a little worried I don't have enough food. So we'll see. Those teenagers, it's, yeah, I, I, I feel you, I feel you. Uh, Scott Bossman, you, how about you? COVID fatigue? Oh, of course. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, down to reading or watching the news once a day. It's, uh, too depressing otherwise. And otherwise just trying to stay busy, uh, and keep the kids busy. I think that's, that's a challenge that, you know, they're homeschooling, but, and the, the superintendent said, or the principal said, you know, they'd have three to four hours of work a day. Well, that's just not the case. They maybe have 30 to 40 minutes a day. Yeah, because uh, I mean they're bright kids and and they work quickly and and then uh, then what? So we're we're trying to keep them busy. Yeah, I've I've been uh, working out with my kids, and uh, I find that they work out too long and too hard for me. So um, there's been a lot of old man jokes floating around the house now. That's always lovely. Uh, Tate, how about you? Yeah, you know, I'm in the same position as everybody else. Um, it's interesting, though. I was riding my mountain bike uh, Saturday, I think it was. And I have never seen so many people on my mountain bike trails as I have, like, that day. It was insane. It's like uh, hordes of teenagers, like roaming packs of teenagers just all over the place. I'm like, I kind of liked it when you guys didn't come outside because now the trails are busy there's people all over the place and i feel like i'm going to run into somebody so go back to your ipads go back inside but they're gonna uh, walk on you tate they, they'd have to catch me eric <laughs> go in the I mean, opposite way <laughs> yeah no that's well that's the thing like well we, we lost like tate there at least oh there he is Oh, Tate, you you got like Bearland Aaron Wi-Fi now. It's everybody <laughs> staying home. I'm sorry, guys. Anyways, yeah, yeah, no worries. Scott Todd, I mean, for you, this is just an opportunity to be uh, the kind of like the Navy SEAL you are, air, land, sea. I mean, I I, I mean, I haven't gone, uh, I haven't gone on the boat. I mean, I could, I guess I could, they, they close the beaches, but in Florida, but I mean, technically I'm not going to the beach. I don't have to go on the beach. Um, you know, the, the plane has actually, uh, been in, um, the plane's actually been in the shop for uh, a week and a half now getting some new instruments and, uh, it's supposed to, I was supposed to come out, it's supposed to get out to this afternoon, like literally like should be any minute now. And Upgrades? if that's the case, then tomorrow I'm supposed to fly it to another maintenance shop where I'm having a new autopilot installed. So 
Ah. It's, it's like grounded right now in a way. So, you know, it's uh, been a little tough. The hangar's empty. I'll tell you what though, Mark, uh, the other day I couldn't take any more of being at home. So I, uh, I went, got in the car, I drove to the hangar, you know, it's not like the coronavirus is hanging around the hangar. So I went in there and my, I was in there for a while. My wife's like, what did you do? And I'm like, I sat there. Like, I don't know, it's an empty hangar. It was, it was, it was peaceful. Not that the house isn't peaceful. I'm getting a little paranoid here, but it was peaceful. Like some planes taking off and it was just me and the empty hangar. Ah. Well, you could do that at any airport in the United States now, though. <laughs> yeah, but the coronavirus might be there. So I got to go to the hangar because the coronavirus yep. isn't in the hangar. It, it doesn't yeah, know about true. it. And I do believe if you wear sunglasses, it doesn't know who you are, too. So that helps. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. I, I think that, um, you know, the best minds in the world are putting their heads together. And I, I, I am hopeful that this is going to last, you know, not as long as everyone seems to think. Um, I can't pronounce the name of the drug, Scott Todd, but there's uh, like, that, uh, that drug. I, I know it's Plaquenil, but uh, who knows, uh, right? Like by the time this comes out, uh, I mean, it may, may have failed or may, may work, who knows? But the, you know, there's a lot of anecdotal uh, evidence that suggests that uh, a Z-Pack with the um, the drug that I know is Plaquenil, but it also goes by Hydro, whatever, that it's showing promising signs. I know they were going to give it deploy in New York City to like 10,000 people beginning the day that we're recording this. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe when this thing comes out, like all is good and, and uh, they got some idea of like some way to contain it. I mean, it's not saying it's cured, but at least if there's some thought on at least we can contain this thing. And we can get everybody back to work and and like continue on, you know. That would be, that would be great. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Um, Mimi Schmidt, what's your tip of the week? A website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? I'm taking your I'm taking your suggestion. When you see people offer wholesale lists, ask for copies of them. They're a wonderful way to get very quick information on what the counties are doing. That's a wonderful tip. That was a cop out. It's it really me. Time. Really? Yeah, really. <laughs> you gotta remember, I'm cooking three meals a day because of coronavirus now. I don't have so much time on my hands. I'm trying to run a business here. You're telling me Dave can't get in that kitchen? Come on. Dave still has he's to not, work. He's not flying. Yes, he is. He's flying and there's no one on the planes. Really? Yeah. There'll be like two and three people on the planes. Did All right, fine. Ray, Ethan and Rachel flew standby to Chicago to see her family, and they everyone on the plane got to, upgraded to first class because there were so <laughs> few people on the plane. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, does anybody know, is Zeno going to be able to get back in the country? Zeno is back in the country. He's back he in Boston. Back. Okay. He's in isolation. Oh, okay. He's, he's so isolated, isolated yeah. he can't even attend this call. He, like, he had to, yeah, like, we don't want him on this call. Like, you know, I don't want to get sick. I don't want to get Corona from the Zoom call. <laughs> good point. That's good point. All right, Mimi. You could have wore your sunglasses. Yeah, I should have worn my sunglasses. <clears throat> we'll, 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 we'll let you have that cop-out tip of the week. Fine. It's fine. No worries. <laughs> All right, well. <laughs> Um, I want to thank the listeners and just remind them that the only way that we'll be able to continue to hazing Mimi and her tips of the week is if you do three little things, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at the We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit course, as well as the wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less. Uh, Scott Bossman. Um, I know that, Flight school is something that people are really going to want to start doing in uncertain times. Wouldn't, wouldn't you agree? I, I would very much agree. I think uh, when, you, when you look at it, there's probably no better time to get into this business. And look, I mean, you're at home, right? And what, what a better time to start working the business from home. And uh, it's pretty timely. Our next flight school starts March 31st with Scott Todd. So um, join us. 
Yeah. So if you're if if you're not in yet, and you want to learn how to get into the April class, just go to landgeek.com forward slash training. But certainly start positioning yourself now. I can't tell you how much gratitude we've been seeing in the Facebook group of people that have their land businesses, they've got that passive income and they're just, they just feel so grateful and, and so protected because they started when, when they did. And um, it's just mitigating all the economic effects of, of what's going on, um, which is really, really nice. So, um, you know, thank you dear listener. And again, uh, be safe out there. And are we ready to do this? One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Oh, so you're supposed to count beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Eric, you, when you host next week, you will, you'll have it. I think I, I'm calling in sick next week. <laughs> I, think, I think it's Bossman's turn. Love Scott, you ready, to, you ready to host the roundtable next week? I mean, if needed. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not like I'm going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> right? But you true. have to have a valid excuse. I mean, I think if there, was an, yeah. Yeah, if there is a valid excuse, sure, I'll step up. What, what right, about, I'm no. just sick of my own voice. Is that a valid excuse? Nah. No. No. Nope. No. That doesn't work. I mean, all right. Well, the thing is, Mark, you can either hang out with us or hang out with your teenagers. B. 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 I, 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 was, I was telling Scott Todd yesterday, there's, there was an article I was reading that in the Wuhan province, because they've been quarantined for like three months, and now they're getting back to life, the divorce rate has shot up exponentially. Oh. <laughs> because can you imagine, like, they've just been, like, stuck. Yeah. You know, their whole routines and, like, all the stress and, like, you know, you, you go crazy. You're like, I, I can't imagine living with this person the rest of my life. Wow. It's funny. So. I've, gotten, I've gotten probably three text messages from friends now saying, like, I have the utmost respect for you. I don't know how you work from home. You're, you're such a, an amazing individual. And it's like, you guys are doing it wrong because, uh, you know, you're working eight hours a day. That, that's why you're going stir crazy. And we're not. So. Yeah, no, it, it's nice to be able to escape to the garage Mahal as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, we all know how to do this for, uh, for sure. Um, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of funny to see my kids kind of struggle with the whole online thing, and they're like, "Dad, you ever heard of Zoom?" I'm like, "Ever heard of Zoom?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I uh, oh. I feel like I've been self quarantining since uh, 2016, man. <laughs> <laughs> like they're like, "Hey, everybody, you gotta work from home," and I'm like, "That like," and people are like struggling. Like there's our Mark. I saw an article yesterday that said how not to eat all day long when you're working from home. And I'm like, where have people been? Where's 2020? What's up? Oh my gosh. Uh, by, by, there's a, there's a cookie place out here called crumble and, um, love crumble. I, do you love crumble? Yeah. And so I, love I was like, man, I, I've, I've really had, I've been really suppressing that urge to stress eat at night. And um, so what I'll do is I'll just go on the Crumble app and just look at the cookies and then I'll just imagine eating all of them. Oh my God. Like I really, like I'll go through it. I'm like, all right, I'll eat that one. I'll eat that one. Okay. That one. No. And I, so like, I'll eat like five cookies in my mind in one sitting and then just feel like sick. And then I don't have to order them. There you go. Yeah. So I've, I've doing, I've been doing imagination stress eating. It feels great to eat it <laughs> imaginatively, but that, that sugar hangover is imaginatively horrible. Yeah. Scott, you might, Scott Boston, you might want to try that with your alcohol. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I could drink. maybe do that. You know, uh, you know. Actually, that, that brings up a, a funny point. Uh, yesterday on the news here in Wisconsin, they were 
because we are now on shutdown as well. They were listing all of the essential businesses in Wisconsin that would stay open. And you had the drug stores, the clinics, the grocery stores, the banks, and the liquor stores was on the list. So that's how I know I'm from Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but what about cheese? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you get that at the grocery. The wineries yeah, they, here are starting to deliver. In, in Denver, the mayor shut down. He said, like, we're going to shut down the, uh, the liquor stores and the weed stores. <laughs> it was mass panic. And he <laughs> oh, yeah. had to reverse his decision. No, no, no. Those can stay open. Okay. <laughs> oh, I bet. Hey, Mark, uh, since you're just looking at pictures of food, should I send you, like, I don't know, some bows pictures and I don't know, like some Cuban bread pictures? You, how, how's that sound? Tampa. Yeah, that honestly, that sounds You'll eat that amazing. for dinner tonight. I, I'm, I'm still trying to shed my, <laughs> my extra Tampa weight. Like, like you know, I like, I'm like Tate probably has some like baby weight because you know how like you eat more when your your wife's pregnant. I still have Tampa weight to shed. Like, I, like it, it was that Tate. It was crazy, right? Yeah, Scott. Uh, Scott redeemed himself. I've said it before, but that guy knows how to eat. He knows how to eat. He knows how to dine, and uh, he is not deserving of the flack that we have given him. I, yeah. Wow. Yeah, Seriously. I know. It hurts to say it, Mimi. It really does. But wow, I'm impressed. I'll be the first to admit it. He uh, yeah. he knows how to eat. It's, you it's missed like the fireworks, the, brother. You missed I the know. fireworks. Don't worry, I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, you you did miss the fireworks. I'm not even gonna say it. Oh my gosh. I mean, Mark, I mean, the, 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 the last night, I mean, okay. Everybody else is feeling left out here, but the last night you got to admit like the meals got better. And then the last night the meal was great. And then it was like the grand finale of the fireworks, like the end, like, bam, I didn't really produce fireworks here, but like the food was really Yeah, good. it, it really was. I, I, I definitely think that, you know, we need to do a Tampa boot camp for no other reason than just, the food in that one restaurant. I'm up. So, I'm up for it. Yeah, East absolutely. Coast, East Coast camp. I'm up for it. East Coast boot camp. So as of now, we're still we're still here. looking at at Vegas in August, Tate. We, we hopefully that's going to gonna happen. We need you to come to Vegas. What, what, what's the probability that we'll be able to have a Vegas boot camp right now? Would you say? I'm going to say high, very very high, because I'm optimistic. Eric, what about you? Um, I don't know, man. Maybe 60%. Okay. Mimi, probability August boot camp? It better be 100% because if, if this lasts for five months, all the airlines are going to go bankrupt and Dave's going to have one job instead of two. And we're going to be looking to sell our house. It better not go five months. Don't, isn't the government bailing the airlines out the pilots out you're not gonna have to make a mortgage payment Mimi I think you're really you're going to a dark place a little too soon oh. here no those those the the money is going to people that make 95,000 and less right yeah I think you're right? talking about giving money to people that make like $95,000 a year and less we'll see yeah I'm sure the government will give the airlines some money it's just a matter of will it be enough Scott okay, Boston, what's your over. prediction? I'm, I'm not being negative, I'm being positive. 100% chance it'll be over in five months and we'll still go to boot camp. I, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think we're going to be there. You think five we'll be there? No. Yep. Scott Todd? Uh, I, have, I, have, uh, I have positive belief in Dr. Oz, man. Like, Dr. Oz is one of the ones studying, or uh, he's, he's paying for the study of the, the drug cocktail that I mentioned. Like he literally, he's paying for it with Columbia University. It's his money going to work. And like, I don't know, man, the guy's done a lot of research. I think they're gonna have, I think the minute that they have some way of knocking this thing out, doesn't mean that it's a cure, doesn't mean it's a vaccine, but man, if you can, if you can um, knock it out of people and get them out of the hospitals, and free up the hospitals and save lives and everybody can go back to work. And you, you just know, like, if I get it, I'll probably be okay. Like the flu, bam, we're going to be all right. 
All right. I and love by the way, it. The president says he wants he wants America open for business by Easter. So we'll see what he says. All right. Let's let's hope. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Um, we'll see y'all next week and stay safe.